What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I got my man X Wing again as we do Kenobi episode five. We haven't even spoken together. I just figured I'd hit the record button. Let's see how he feels. We'll see how I feel. And yes, I'm over in Dallas getting ready for the Fan Expo. So if you're in Dallas at the Fan Expo, hopefully you could see me. So sorry I'm not in my normal studio. Hope I sound okay. I know X Wing sounds and looks wonderful. Mm, my lighting's not the greatest. I've got like. <laughs> triple lamps here like trying to make some some uh amazing lighting but it's it's not working so we'll go right in like we always do episode five i think the very first thing that we have to share and talk about is the reunion of hayden christensen and obi-wan kenobi that that was uh that was the first thing that they did to us <laughs> into the episode it was like right off the top uh i got a picture here there we go mm. there it was but it was episode two hayden right episode Pre two, Pre -episode two hayden man it, it and it also didn't look like they de-aged him a little bit it looked he looked a little older like they could have added a come little on. extra layer of come on man he looks great and you know it <laughs> of course i i and of course, I loved it. I loved this part. I loved it. This is all I wanted from this show. I was hoping that yep. we'd see Obi-Wan Kenobi just watching over Luke and then having flashback scenes of his friend, like crying. You know, like what could have been? Like it could have been a show like that. Yeah. Whatever. That's what I thought. I thought we were going to see some Clone Wars stuff. But we got episode two flashbacks. And so. Basically, during this scene, if you didn't see the episode, major spoilers throughout the whole thing, like normal, they're they're doing a uh, lightsaber training where uh, Obi Wan is remembering that that Anakin Skywalker is a little aggressive, I guess, a little. Mm -hmm. He can call his hand. He can. He knows what's coming. So, what are your thoughts on this? I thought this was <clears throat> great. I thought this was awesome. Just, I mean, like, like you said, I wanted a whole show of this. So, like, a little too little, a little too late. But I mean, at least we're getting some of it, you know. And this was the only flashback throughout the entire episode. So they kept flashing. They kept going back to this moment when they were dueling, and how Anakin thought he had the upper hand, and Obi Wan uses the Force. So basically, in this lightsaber battle that takes place throughout the entire episode. Anakin was very aggressive, knocks the lightsaber out of Obi-Wan's hand. Obi-Wan Obi does a little dance with them and uses the force to pull the lightsaber out of Anakin's hand to win the duel. And basically is saying, if you don't learn this, if you don't learn, it, what was the line? It's like, if you don't stop trying to win, you will always lose. Something like that, right? Yeah. Your constant need to prove yourself is, is so, yeah. This is why X-Wing's here, because he's supposed to know this stuff while I don't. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, well, I could get into it if you want me to. I, I mean, to go a little bit it, more man. in depth, a little bit more in depth, what I really liked about it is they brought back some of the choreography from Nick Gillard when they were actually fighting. So that was that was probably my favorite part. You can see little hints of the prequels in there with the choreography, which I think is great. Very true. Very true. So then the episode picks up with uh obi-wan and little leia as they go back where did where did they go back to jabim what's it called again jabim yeah or jabim and, and then you see darth vader on his star cruiser with reva reva the devastator comes in. What's we get that? to see the, the devastator <laughs> we get to see the devastator again yeah he comes in and he looks at reva and he says kneel before me <laughs> like Neil, and, and you could see her hesitant, like, okay. And then he gives her the rank of Grand Inquisitor, and he's like, You've done well. All right, where's Obi Wan now? She tells him where Obi Wan is with little Leia, and they're they're off to the planet, they're they're making their way off to the planet. So Vader's off to find Obi Wan and Leia, they're heading to Jabim. Did I say that right? Mm -hmm. Or Jabim. Right. <laughs> They're heading to that planet. So now there's a problem. Obi-Wan lands on the planet with Luke. They get out of the little ship. It looks kind of like uh it looks like Geonosis a little bit. Yeah, kind of does. 
And so they get out and he goes to uh <laughs> he goes to Ice Ice Cube's son and says, We need to get out. And he goes, These people have been waiting here. There's a bunch of people there. He's like, they've been waiting here for months to leave. He goes, Once I get them out, you guys are next. We'll get you to all drawn. So then the little robot, Leia's little robot toy, which is now evil because there's an evil chip on it, <laughs> decides to go out and cut the power. So the the doors to get the ship out won't open. And so then Obi-Wan's like, oh, my gosh, Vader's coming. Uh, how much time do we have? And they're like, oh, we, we only have so much time. And he's like, I'm going to go out and stall them. And uh, you got an hour to get that thing open. And they don't know how to get it open. And here comes little Leia. I can do it. Get me a ladder. <laughs> and all the grown folk are like, hey, <laughs> this is grown man's business. And then Obi-Wan like says, hey. I trust her. Get her a ladder. So they get little Leia a ladder to climb up to the top to fix the power to open up so the ship can escape. So that's what Leia is doing this whole time. She's she's in a little tunnel, the little 10 year old that no one else, nobody else can figure it out, but she can. So she's in the tunnels to try to figure that out. Reva and the stormtroopers land while Darth Vader is still in the ship and they find the blast door and they're going to try to blast it open. To get through, and Obi Wan brings the troops together uh, to to face them if they get the door open, and then we get more flashback scenes with uh, Hayden and you and McGregor mm -hmm. as an episode two sword fighting. So so far, where you at on this episode, X Wing? So far, where you at? Where you at? Where's your head at? Everything with Reva could have been cut out of this episode, and it would have been up to this point like everything I wanted from the show. Like everything looks good. I'm stoked. I'm pumped. I'm, I'm thinking at this point, like it's very smartly written that they're using the lightsaber battle to kind of juxtapose this battle between Vader and Anna, or Vader and Obi Wan, where it's this kind of battle of wits, and he expects him to do one thing, and it's just I thought it was it was good up to this point. Good. Here's the flashback scene from Obi Wan where he's remembering, not Vader. But Anakin, it's kind of touching. Vader's also remembering a little bit. They're having a moment here. Get rid of the shaky camera. For the love of God, yeah. get rid of the shaky camera. So Reva and the troops blast open the blast door. And they get into a fight with Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan's got his lightsabers doing what he can. The stormtroopers are killing the people. The people are killing the stormtroopers. Actually, it was a pretty decent fight, I will say. But the people that were there that were running, they were getting overrun by the stormtroopers and Reva. And this person here, the spy, the spy was held back. Her name is Tella. I honestly don't remember. It's Indira Varma. That's all I've called her the yeah. whole season. <laughs> She's the spy that helped Obi-Wan escape. She also is going to help Obi-Wan escape again. Because she sacrifices herself, as you can see, with the bomb in her hand to make sure that everybody that's still alive, including Obi-Wan, get through another door from the Stormtroopers and Reva. She looks over at Obi-Wan and she's like, go, go. And he's like, and Obi-Wan's like, no. And he's trying to fight. He's like, no, no, don't do it. And she sets off the thermal detonator. It blasts Reva back and kind of sends Obi-Wan through and another door shuts so she saves the day so far it was a really weird touching moment that she had with her droid as the droid there is like trying to you know protect her a little bit and she looks up at the droid and was just like oh no and yeah, there she is there there she is looking up at her droid as the droid is taking all these bullets for her and she's just like i can't believe you're dying I remember so she, the droid's name. The droid is Ned. I remember that much. But I got like, did you get Rogue One vibes from this kind of major Rogue yeah. One vibes? Major yeah, I got Rogue One vibes. Uh, major Ro Rogue One vibes. So, but then it happens. There's not enough time. So Obi Wan is like, I'm gonna surrender. I'm gonna surrender to give you guys time to escape. I'm gonna be the Jedi. I know I'm supposed to be. I'm gonna be the man. I'm going to surrender over to Reva. And so he does. So Obi-Wan walks up to the blast door, puts his hand on it, and Reva comes up to the blast door on the other side, and they begin to talk to each other. And Obi-Wan's like, 
you know, how did you know Anakin is Darth Vader? You should not have known this. You should not have known this unless you were there during Order 66. <laughs> he goes, you must have been there. And Reva's starting to get in all her feels. You know, and she's like, stop. You don't know what I'm capable of. And <laughs> he goes, that's the only reason you know that's Anakin, because you were there in the Jedi Temple as a youngling. So Obi-Wan starts calling Reva youngling. <laughs> oh, no, no. Vader called Reva youngling, right? Yeah. Did I get that right? Yeah. And so, yeah. Anyway, the word youngling gets thrown up, thrown up all over the place again. Yeah. And so Reva takes her lightsaber, sticks it to the blast door, and Obi-Wan surrenders. And they begin to have... A conversation. Where are you at this point now? Where are you? This was like, oh god, here we go. It was starting to take a turn here. <laughs> like they're talking to each other through a blast door. Like everyone is gonna hear what you're saying. This kind of this is just this plot convenience thing that kind of drives me nuts. She sticks the saber through the door and cuts the lock. Why didn't you do that the second you showed up? You know, it's just stupid little things like that that kind of tick me off. But this was it was starting to take a little bit of a turn. And it's like, you know, the second she's like, you have no idea what I've done alone. It's like, ugh. Ugh. It's gross. But then they start, <laughs> then they start showing like a Reva flashback as she remembers Anakin Skywalker coming into the Jedi Temple during Order 66 and splashing it up. And what I find really bizarre is before the episode aired, Disney decided to put, to put a trigger warning about this episode saying, uh, really? be careful watching everyone. <laughs> trigger warning. Jeez. So, well, uh, hey, at least uh, we got to give a shout out to Star Wars Theory. He's finally given justice here. He got the younglings being slain. Oh, from his uh, yeah. From his, from his <laughs> Everybody tweet. was complaining yeah. about it. <laughs> I don't know. Star Wars Theory can't tweet anything without people getting mad. Uh, so, so there you have it. But yeah, so this was we get to see Hayden Christensen again as Darth Vader before the suit, doing what he does and destroying. Then Obi Wan and Reva have a conversation where Obi Wan is able. to... To get out of Riva, here it is. Here's the leaks, everyone, that were true. Here it is. Here's the big one. Riva was wanting to get to Obi Wan because she's hunting Darth Vader. Riva, this whole time, was doing all this because she wants to kill Darth Vader because of this scene right here where Darth Vader, before the suit, killed all her friends and all the kids and all the stuff. So this entire time we now have Riva, the hunter wanting to kill Darth Vader. Obi-Wan then says, Hey, we can do it together. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where I'm like, come on, man. This is where I like, I was just like, ah, here we go. Here we go. Uh, how did Vader not know? Uh, why does he let this go on? What is happening? What is going? This is where I was at at this moment. I'm like, now she's going to want to fight Vader. Now she's telling Obi-Wan, I don't need your help. I could do this myself. Now you're waiting for her to sneak up behind Vader and do something. It's all planned out. It's all like, well, you know Vader's not going to die. You know Obi-Wan's not going to die. You know Leia's not going to die. You know the Inquisitor's coming back. There's no risk. There's no chances. There's no nothing. What's the point of this plot and story? That's just where I'm at. And just, I'm just like, <sighs> and the leaks have been 100% correct. All right. What say you? I was just like you said, you know, like, oh, Reva's this hunter. Oh, she's going after Vader. And I'm just like, okay. I, I don't care. <laughs> I just don't. Um, I like that is so far down the road for me. I just care about you and Hayden. It seems like adding... Hayden and you, you know, at the beginning, really, um, it, it's really keeping everyone's focus away from this extra subplot. Because seeing all the stuff on Twitter and the people that really like this episode, that's all they're talking about. <laughs> Rev not in see... any of those tweets, dude. It's all Hayden. That's it. It's 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 all Hayden. 
So, <laughs> Obi-Wan escapes, or Reva lets him escape because Obi-Wan convinces Reva that, hey, if we do this together, Darth Vader is going to come down and we could take care of business. Right? Yep. So, Vader comes down. Obi-Wan's away. Leia magically gets the thing fixed. The ship is taken off. And now we see video game Darth Vader shows up. Like, without hesitation. The man is, like, pulling down the ship. This I is love a, this. This is taken out of Star Tours, I yes. believe. Yes. You know, when you're in the Star Tours ride, Vader, like... And so now <laughs> the questions are... How come Vader didn't do that in Empire Strikes Back to the Falcon? How come Vader didn't do that all the time? How come Vader doesn't do it here? How come? But he does it here. And he's just like, ship? No problem. <laughs> Down it goes. He rips it open, you know, without any hesitation. And I mean, it, it's definitely video game Vader. Like, like I, I don't know how else to say it. Yeah. Like, I know Vader's powerful with the force. I get all that and stuff like that. But he he was just like going off. Yeah, it's like Star um, Star Killer Vader, but when he was ripping apart that ship, tearing it open, I was super into that. I was having a nerd gas. I know a lot of people were like like overexcited. So he rips it, he rips it all open, all open, and um, there's no one in there. <laughs> so it was a switcheroo, so just dumb. to lure Vader down. So the other little ship is like hiding while Vader's ripping the ship up, and then it kind of like takes off. Then Reva. Takes her chance. I got him. I'm going to get him. Here we go. Reva steps up behind Vader to kill him. <laughs> and I'm just like, here we go. Here we go. Vader's already uh, taken down a ship. Sorry, I had a little glitch in the Matrix, everyone. I'm using hotel internet, so forgive <laughs> me. But as you can see in this photo right here, Vader's hand is up. <laughs> he stops the kill blow and literally destroys Reva without even pulling out his lightsaber. Reva's swinging. He's just stopping it, you know, casual. <laughs> Pushing her back, throwing her around. He then, like, uh, takes her Inquisitor blade, breaks it in two, then takes one of it and gives the other one back to her. I'm like, you really? You want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> just like toys man like a, like a freaking game like it's nothing and it's just kind of like i get vader sometimes plays with his prey like we saw in some comic books and stuff but i'm just like here we go no problem boom boom stabs her in the stomach gets the qui-gon treatment yep. after this happens great <laughs> here we go there's Vader stopping the blade. After this happens, our good old friend, the Grand Inquisitor, comes back and was like, <laughs> you thought I was gone, didn't you? No, we didn't. Nobody <laughs> thought you were gone. We all knew you were coming back. We all knew you were in Rebels. We all knew you had two stomachs. Nobody thought you were dead. It wasn't a big shocker. We were literally waiting for you to show up. Uh, and you did right there while Reva's been stabbed in the stomach, laying there left for dead. We're waiting for the kill shot. You know, we're waiting for whatever, because it seems like in this show, let's just stab everyone in the stomach and we survive. No big trick, right? Everyone gets stabbed in the stomach. Not Qui-Gon Jim, though. He can get stabbed, through, you know, whatever, but he's dead <laughs> because he sucks, right? But Reva, you know, through the, through the chest, stomach, whatever. She's okay. She's on the ground. Grand Inquisitor. He's fine. Took a couple swims in the Bacta. He's back. <laughs> Gotta love that Bacta. <laughs> All right. So where at you? Where where are you now, man? Where are you here? So, point? I mean, up to this point, I knew everything up to this point in the plot, right? The leaks were crazy on this show, and everything that we knew was going to happen happened. Uh, it was nice to see Vader just kicking some ass, and he wasn't like torn down to this little child that was almost beaten by Riva. I would have been in fits right now. So it was it was nice to see him kicking some ass, getting some work in. Um, didn't complain about Reva getting stabbed. That was kind of nice. And then, uh, and then Grand Inquisitor shows up and it's like, gotcha. It's like, no, 
no, you didn't, dude. You didn't get us. <laughs> but you know, this is this is one of those things that Disney likes to do, and so you just kind of have to assume that it's going to be there. So Vader and the Inquisitor just leave her on the ground with her lightsaber. <laughs> She's too angry to die. <laughs> So what happens is she crawls. She sees this little disc on the ground. She crawls over to the disc. And the disc the disc is from Bail Organa, the, the, the communication disc that he talks to Obi-Wan. And she finds it. And she plays a recording that Bail Organa left for Obi-Wan, basically spilling the beans. Mm. You know, he's like, I'm going to go to Tatooine. I haven't heard from you, Obi-Wan. I'm going to go to Tatooine to take care of, you know, Owen Lars and the boy. And I hope, you know, you're safe. And I hope Leia's safe. But uh, I'm going to go to Tatooine. And that's it. You see Reva laying on the ground. Uh, and then we get then we get this image. I just, I feel like if you're sending a message across space that it's very possible that it gets intercepted, how are you going to be like, Owen Lars on 425 Tatooine Road with the child Luke? <laughs> like, really? Probably not a good idea. Obi-Wan and Leia have escaped. Darth Vader and the, the real Grand Inquisitor walk out. Reva's laying with her stomach, her chest stabbed alive. And the end of the episode, they show little Luke. Now, spoilers again. You don't want to know. I'm going to talk about the leaks for just a second. The leaks are that Reva goes to Tatooine and saves Luke Skywalker. Mm. <laughs> we have a moment of silence, please. <laughs> Rest Dear in God, peace please to the don't OT. let it be. <laughs> so that's it. We see young Luke at the end. Now, from my, I'll, I'll give my perspective. Um, a fun episode, seeing uh, ep episode two, Hayden Christensen and Ewan McGregor. I, I use their real names. It's kind of weird. But uh, Anakin and Obi-Wan fighting in like the episode two format. Of course, that's what we all wanted to see. Of course. And they were very wise to put that at the beginning of the episode. So you're kind of like, ah, oh, here we go. The Reva switch that she's hunting Vader, it just sounds silly to me. Because at any moment, she had opportunities to just kind of stab him whenever, um, you know, and she didn't take that chance. She waited. If she really wanted to kill Vader, it wouldn't have surprised me. Like, why? If, if that was her primary reason, she could have used Obi-Wan Kenobi. You know what I mean? Like, they could have just waited yeah. for him to, like, land or whatever. Um, she had the authority to send the troopers away or whatever. She, there's just so many things you could watch. And see what's you know see what's going on, um, but yeah. Uh, so the 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 spy woman suicides herself to save Obi Wan. You know, if not, he probably would have been captured or died. But then he gets captured anyway. So that was a sacrifice that really didn't need to happen. Kind of silly. Uh, why is it that ten year old Leia is the only one that can uh, fix everything that's over there? That was a little. Because my body doesn't fit. <laughs> dur, dur, dur. <laughs> Such bad writing. Yeah, the writing the writing is pretty bad. And, uh, you know, then we had OP Darth Vader. I, I, I like to say video game Darth Vader because it looked like Force Unleashed Darth Vader. And, uh, yeah, of course, being a, a great character, Darth Vader, you love to see like that. But it was a little, for me, it was, it was just just a tad too much. But enjoyable uh enjoyable so now we're, we're coming up on the last episode was this episode good enough to save the series in my personal opinion absolutely absolutely not i think the series is wrecked i don't know what they're gonna do and if reva does end up saving luke skywalker or something like that dear god that is uh that will send shock waves through the universe of the star wars fandom at least in my my opinion um but the whole thing of now Reva's hunting Vader. This is why she's angry. This is why she wants Obi Wan. I don't know, man. It's just how can you like go through all that training and like do all that just for that one moment? But that's just me. 
That's Disney, man. I mean, think about, you know, there was so much of this that reminded me of the sequels, unfortunately, in this episode. There was a lot of sequel huge stuff. Huge callback sequel, yeah. Huge yeah, callback. I mean, there's the ship being held. That reminds me of Ray doing that. There's yeah. the rolling around on the ground when they're in the lightsaber fight. That reminds me of Luke and Ben. Uh, and then another one is Reva, that she's willing to go through all of this to get a shot at Vader. It reminds me of freaking General Hux, who killed, like, billions of people just to be like i'm the spy uh, it's just t- there's so many plot conveniences it's bad writing this one was better but the sins of the father ultimately have ruined the show what are you looking forward to in the final episode i mean li- but listen what uh, where does it go from here vader and the inquisitor are gone Did, are we gonna get another tracking fob thing again well, we put a tracking fob on Reva. I know she wasn't going to die because I stabbed her perfectly through the stomach. You know, so now I know she's going to be alive. But we've, but, uh, you know, while I stabbed her, I made sure when I held her lightsaber, I put a little tracking beacon. <laughs> so we'll see where she goes. Is Vader just going to sit around for 10 years and just be like, well, I know everyone's out there. Eh. There's the rematch of the century, man. There's got to be this big fight they've been talking about, you know. So that's something that's going to be in there. I'm sure that's going to be flashy and cool and exciting. But again, that's all I'm excited for. The story itself just isn't there. Does this mess up anything from the original trilogy for you? It already has. Yeah. (laughs) Like a lot. (laughs) I think when this is all said and done, I'll probably do like a wrap up stream Mm -hmm. and talk about like uh there's so much more than just the episodes itself it's the marketing how they marketing like uh you know hayden and ewan the uh how the leaks came out how the uh racist talk kind of came out when when the episodes were getting bad reviews um just all that stuff just kind of you had pablo hidalgo trying to justify (laughs) You know, uh, Obi-Wan not knowing Vader on Tatooine, yet there are comics and books where actually he's actually talking to, like, the huts on Tatooine and everybody knows who Vader is. You know, it's like I get that Obi-Wan was a hermit, but, I mean, he obviously went to town for some things. Like, look at the house he stayed in when Luke was there. There's obviously stuff. It wasn't a cave. <laughs> Pablo took his first chance to crawl out of his box to start arguing with fans over the show. <laughs> He was so mad that people were making videos because the writer came out and were like, what does Anakin really know? Or what What does Obi-Wan really know? Does Obi-Wan know that Vader's alive? Does he know that he's this? Does he know that he's that? Like, did he even know that Anakin turned to Vader? And he goes, Pablo Hidalgo answered. Then Pablo freaked out on Twitter and was like, Ugh. they just bury themselves. It, when you see a show like this with the high-profile characters and you see all this other garbage that star wars pushes out it doesn't help no it just doesn't help you don't see any other you don't see any of other franchise doing this and that's what like bothers me the most about this whole thing you don't see marvel doing this you don't see wb doing this you listen freaking ezra miller i don't know if this is true is like on the run (laughs) like kidnapping people and they're like yeah the flash movie's coming out (laughs) <laughs> you know what i mean it's like what like they don't say like everything's fine everything's yeah. fine <laughs> it's just like don't forget the flash movies coming out even though our stars is allegedly <laughs> possibly i have no idea i don't want to make any accusations uh. because it's just rumors but he kidnapped someone and beat up people and everything but it's okay yeah. they haven't come out like you know they don't come out and say anything about amber heard or anything like that but when it comes to lucasfilm it's just like don't do this. Look at this. Look at that. It, it, it just messes up everything when they do this. And I don't understand why of, of all the properties that Disney owns, it's Lucasfilm that does this. There's an article out now saying that they were planning to wait 10 years when Ewan McGregor is 10 years older to redo the original trilogy to really tie everything together. And by that time, they figured that the old heads like us will just be too old to care um you know and like the next generation will enjoy the original trilogy and then they could have their own you know boom 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 and just the disney star wars saga will be right there and then they could add a beautiful timeline all the way up from their creation hey they own it 
do whatever they want, I guess. And I guess. But uh, that way they could tie it all together. Good. Good. That's great. So uh, with all that being said, where do we go for the last episode of Kenobi? Straight to the battle. That's it. <laughs> Just the lightsaber fight and it's done. Then it's yeah. like, Kenobi will be back in season two. Probably. <laughs> and expect the Reva show in October 2023. I think Reva's going to die. Boy, that'd be nice. <laughs> I think she's gonna die. I think she's gonna die. That that was one of the leaks is that she was gonna die. Say like they killed off the woman spy, which none of us can remember her name. Forgive me, people that are yeah. watching on YouTube. But uh, so they killed her off. She could have had her own show of like, what's it like being a spy? You know mm -hmm. that actually, I wouldn't even. That would be kind of cool if you want my honest opinion. But they killed her off. Um, I'm not even mad at Riva. I just like don't want to be i don't want that anymore just get rid of it i'm just like i'm tired of the story just get rid of yeah. it yeah yeah non sequitur yeah. I, it, but if they do a reva spinoff do you think cow will make an appearance no no cow i don't think so i have to go back and look at all the lightsabers because i watched it at like 4 30 this morning and i've yeah. only watched it once i gotta go back and do some research there was one interesting scene where Obi-Wan was with all those people and he found a box of lightsabers. Mm -hmm. And he's just kind of like, you know, then he starts remembering the flashback again mm -hmm. with uh, young Anakin. So where did all those lightsabers come from? They just like hanging out casual. I don't know if it was survivors or, yeah. or what, but I got to look at them to find out whose they were. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. Make sure you subscribe to X-Wing. His channel will be listed in the top of the description. And I'm so glad that you guys are enjoying these reviews. We got one more episode left. And if you'd like to see me and X-Wing do like Andor and all the other stuff coming up, uh, let us know in the comment section below. Appreciate you guys being here. <sighs> We're almost there, buddy. One more to go. And I think we'll do like, <laughs> maybe we'll do an entire round table discussion and I'll bring a bunch of other people in to go through the whole mess of Lucasfilm just messing everything up. Anyway, this is Jay. This is X-Wing. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.